This is continuation of our discussion on the differentiation of power series functions. Now remember, we are using power series to define functions. And then the question is, how can we calculate the derivative of these functions? And if we can calculate the derivative of these functions, then what is going to be the derivative? Okay. So uh, let's recall what is a power series function. A power series function is an expression of the form that you can see on the screen f of z is equal to cn z minus alpha raised to the power n and n varies from 0 to infinity. Now here cn and alpha are fixed complex numbers and z is basically the complex variable. Then the question is when this function is well defined we already discussed that it is defined when the series converges. And then the next question is how can we differentiate that thing. So to discuss derivatives of this uh, power series functions then uh, we have some notations so the kth derivative of this function is denoted by f raised to power so we have k written in parentheses so this denotes the kth derivative of this function f of z and uh, if k is equal to 0 then this is actually uh, the function itself okay now uh, let's recall what we have proved uh, so far if we have a function which is a power series function defined in the following way over here once again cn and alpha are fixed complex numbers as that is the complex variable and if this complex function complex valued function has a radius of convergence rho which is some uh, non zero positive okay so a real number then this function is infinitely differentiable in this disk of convergence and in fact, we can calculate uh, the kth derivative by taking the terms of the series and taking their k derivatives. Okay, so for example, if these are the terms of the series, then if we differentiate these terms k times, then this is exactly going to be this thing. In other words, we just uh, differentiate each and every term and write it down, then this is going to be the kth derivative of the function defined using this power series okay and uh, at the end we can in fact calculate these coefficients ck's given in the following way okay so that's what we have uh, discussed and proved so far about uh, the derivatives of power series functions okay now let's consider uh, this uh, simple example where we need to show that uh, in fact this function okay so this power series function in the compact form is given as 1 over 1 minus z square okay and uh, this is true over here the z belongs to this disk now remember what is this disk so it is a disk of radius 1 okay so it is a disk of radius 1 and center 0 okay so and remember the boundary is not included so basically uh, this is the domain for this function and we want to show that this power series is in fact in compact form is equal to 1 over 1 minus z square okay so if you want to uh, prove this thing then uh, we need to uh, have some starting point in other words some information that we can use to prove this thing and uh, the information that we are going to use is uh, we already proved it in our uh, previous module so uh, what is the information so the information is if we have uh, complex numbers in this uh, unit disk centered at origin then this uh, geometric series converges to 1 over 1 minus z okay and uh, if uh, this holds for all the values in this disk uh, in compact form this series is equal to 1 over 1 minus z okay and uh, of course if uh, uh, the modulus of z is greater than or equal to 1 then the series diverges so in other words uh, the domain of the function uh, 1 over 1 minus z in this case is going to be uh, the unit disk centered at origin okay so now we are going to use uh, this geometric series and its compact form to prove our required result that uh, this expression is equal to 1 over 1, over one minus z square so uh, this is going to be uh, the starting point now since we want to show this thing for only complex numbers belonging to this unit disk and uh, in fact this disk is basically 
uh, the domain of this geometric series as well so where this holds so according to result that we have seen uh, about the derivatives of uh, power series functions we can in fact calculate uh, the derivative of this function by taking the derivative of each and every term so term by term differentiation is allowed here so then we can calculate the derivative so uh, now you can see that the derivative of z is 1 the derivative of z square is 2z the derivative of z cube is 3z square and z raised to power n has the derivative uh, n z raised to power n minus 1 and if you want to write it down in the in a general formula then this is going to be equal to n z raised to power n minus 1 n is equal to 1 to infinity now notice that over here n is starting from 0 but over here n is starting from 1 uh, because uh, this first term the derivative of uh, uh, 1 is basically 0 over here okay so uh, we have lost this one term and then we are starting from here and we know uh, using uh, basically uh, the formula formulas for the derivative of a complex valued functions this is going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus z square okay so just using the simple formula of the derivative of a complex valued function okay so uh, now we have uh, the following result n is equal to 1 to infinity n z raised to power n minus 1 is equal to 1 over 1 minus z square now if you want to uh, get the required result uh, then uh, you want to uh, translate these indices okay so over here in fact you are starting from 1 and if i replace this n with n plus 1 okay so to get our required result so over here just replace this n okay so uh, replace this n to be n plus 1 and replace this n to be n plus 1 and what do we get n plus 1 and uh, this one will be cancelled with this one and we get z raised to power n but then this n will be starting from 0 and uh, there will be no change uh, in the series because uh, uh, instead of starting from 1 now we are starting from 0 over here okay so that's what we have uh, proved and uh, which was the requirement okay so in fact uh, using uh, this term by term uh, differentiation thing we have in fact found another function and its uh, power series representation okay so uh, that's where this uh, term by term differentiation is useful because uh, you can find new power series representations of new functions now let's consider uh, another example uh, it's about bezel functions so bezel functions are uh, one of the most important functions in uh, mathematics and in physics and they appear in many physical phenomena in their solution in their discussion for example electromagnetic waves for example you have heat conduction and many other problems and uh, in particular uh, on the screen you can see a, a circular drum and if you if you beat this drum then you see there are waves in the drum and uh, if you consider the radial parts okay so the radial parts of uh, these waves okay so the parts of uh, those form these bezel functions so uh, etc etc so there are many physical appearances of these bezel functions so these are uh, important functions now we can uh, see that uh, this uh, uh, bezel function uh, j naught is given in the form of power series okay so uh, obviously if we want to manipulate with these functions if we want to deal with these functions then we are definitely going to for example find out what is the derivative of this function and for that we are going to need the result of when this term by term differentiation of bezel function is allowed and how can we calculate this thing okay so that's why our current discussion is useful here so first we need to find the radius of convergence why we need to find the radius of convergence because we know that uh, the radius of convergence is basically the domain of the function and on that domain we can only take the term by term differentiation of uh, the power series representation okay so to find the radius of con convergence we are going to use uh, the ratio test for that we are going to need uh, the nth term and the n plus one term okay so we can just find these uh, terms by taking okay so nth term and then taking n is equal to n plus 1 so just replace n with n plus 1 and you will get this expression now let's calculate uh, the limit of this expression because uh, as i told you we are calculating we are using basically the ratio test okay so n approaches to infinity uh, this mod of uh, zeta n plus 1 over zeta n okay so uh, just replacing the values of this zeta n and zeta n plus 1 so we get this thing okay so we haven't done anything here just write down their values 
in the next step just write down the denominator over here and numerator is over here now over here uh, we can see that there will be some cancellations so for example this uh, n factorial okay so uh, this n factorial is basically equal to n factorial into n factorial because this is n factorial square and over here we can see that this is n plus 1 factorial square so it is n plus 1 factorial and n plus 1 factorial so when uh, they will be cancelled out okay so this n and this n they will be cancelling out with this thing and we will be left with n plus 1 and n plus 1 okay and similarly uh, we can uh, we can see that for example over here uh, this minus 1 is to power n will be cancelled out with this and we will be left with minus 1 is to power just 1 okay and uh, uh, similarly uh, moving on to the next terms we can uh, see over here that this is z is to power 2n plus 2 and over here this is z is to power 2n okay so if we cancel out these things then we will be left with z is to power 2 because 2n will be cancelled out with 2 and this uh, 2 raised to power 2n will be cancelling out with this thing okay so there will be cancellations and uh, what do we get at the end so we get minus 1 is to power 1 z square over 2 square and limit n approaches to infinity 1 over n plus 1 square okay now uh, the point is we don't need to focus on this limit because this limit is zero so since this limit is zero so everything is going to be equal to a zero okay and uh, by the way uh, we don't have to worry about whether this limit is going to be infinity or not because if it is infinity then th that will be a, a troubling thing over here but it is not infinity because z2 minus 1 they are independent of n so it is just going to be these expressions okay so n approaches to infinity of 1 is equal to 1 so we'll be getting minus 1 z square over 2 square and multiplied with 0 so we get 0 over here so according to uh, the ratio test if uh, this value is less than 1 then uh, basically uh, the series always converges okay so over here uh, we have 0 and which is less than 1 so that's why the series converges and uh, it converges for every z for every complex number z because there was no condition on z so it is 0 for each and every complex number so that's why the domain is going to be equal to the whole complex plane or we can say that the radius of convergence of this uh, bezel function j0 is basically infinity so in fact we can perform term by term differentiation for any complex number okay so uh, let's begin with the uh, differentiation now so we have this uh, expanded form of this uh, j0 so this is going to be equal to so the first term is 1 the second term is minus z square over 2 square up to so on now uh, since the term by term differentiation is allowed in this case so we just uh, differentiate these terms so the de de derivative of this z square over 2 square is minus z over 2 similarly uh, the derivative of this z is power 4 over 2 square 2 4 raised to power 2 is going to be equal to uh, z over 2 cube and 1 over 1 factorial 2 factorial up to so on now uh, the point is we are uh, writing down these terms in this form so that we can see that it is compatible with the general formula so if you want to get this expression uh, this uh, general expression of uh, the terms of the series then you can just take the derivative of this general term of j naught okay so since uh, uh, n is basically treated as a constant and the only variable is going to be z here so that's why we can easily calculate uh, the derivative of this general term and uh, this is the same as taking the term by term derivative of this j naught okay so if you want to write it down in a more suitable form then uh, you want to change uh, the index since uh, the derivative of the first term was uh, 0 so the derivative of 1 was 0 so that's why now uh, instead of starting from 0 we are starting from n is equal to 1 so if you want to change it back to uh, n is equal to 0 so the process is kind of very simple if you replace or if you move it to a 0 then you add a 1 to n okay so if you move uh, one step back then you add one step ahead in n okay so it becomes so n becomes basically n plus 1 and similarly other n's become n plus 1 and simplifying this expression we get this formula for the first derivative of j naught okay and uh, in expanded form these are going to be the terms okay now we have uh, this expression for the derivative and it can be checked that this new function okay so which is obtained by taking the term by term differentiation of the terms of uh, j naught has uh, basically 
radius of convergence to be equal to infinity okay so we have a new function now and with the help of, help of this function we can define the next bezel function so with the help of this function we can calculate uh, this j1 which is going to be equal to minus j naught prime of z okay and up to so on so that's how we deal with bezel functions using this important result of power series expression and its differentiation so uh, in this module uh, we discussed some implications of uh, term by term differentiations of power series functions okay in the next modules now we are going to uh, start defining uh, complex valued functions using uh, these power series functions and of course then we are going to need uh, these formulas like uh, how to take the derivative of those functions uh, that we have discussed in this module